Hey, hey, party people. We are finally painting this football uniform padding inspired evening wear extravaganza monstrosity. <laughs> and as usual, per my time lapse illustrations, the narration is going to be a grab bag of tips and tricks on painting fashion illustration. First up, let's talk about what materials I'm using because y'all always ask me. Uh, the paper I'm using is Arches brand hot press watercolor paper, 300 pound. Now, normally I use 100, uh, 140 pound or somewhere around there because 300 pound paper is pretty expensive and really thick. And the thickness and the cost is really unnecessary for my work most of the time. But because this one is so elaborate and it's kind of a big deal, um, I wanted a sturdier paper that would last a lot longer. And so I bit the bullet and spent the money. And yeah, Arches is expensive. Whew. Yeah, it's expensive. This is expensive, but I felt like this project was worth it. And I chose the hot press paper because typically hot press paper is less textured than cold press paper. And I didn't want the texture of the paper fighting some of the things that I was painting, namely the fringe and the pearls. I want the fringe to lay flat and straight. I want my pearls to be nice and round and shiny. And everything, you know, the pearls in the fringe, they're pretty small individually. And so with really textured paper, it would really affect the look of the fringe and the pearls. So I chose hot press paper. I like both hot press and cold press papers, just I use them for different things. The paint I'm using, first up for the dresses, I'm using Knicker brand gouache, N-I-C-K-E-R. It's a, uh, I bought it in Japan and I really kind of fell in love with it. I bought a little set and I, yeah, I totally fell in love with it. And then later on, you will see me do the skin tones. The skin tones I did, the darkest skin tones I did with Windsor Newton Burnt Umber and Ivory Black Gouache. And then the lighter, the, me the medium skin tones and the lighter skin tones I did with the Pabeo Burnt Sienna with a little bit of the Knicker Yellow Ochre and Carmine Red. The brushes I'm using are the same ones. If you watch my channel, I use the same brushes over and over again. I have the, uh, I have a Windsor Newton round. That's the black handle. And then my Princeton round, which is the red handle. Later on, you're going to see me paint with a silver brush. It's a Camelon Pro. And I bought it in Japan. And when I first picked it up, I didn't know anything about this brush. It just kind of looked cool. So I got one. And turns out it's for model painting. But I don't really care as long as it works. Um, you know, some people peel potatoes with a spoon. Whatever, right? Whatever works. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying this brush, the silver one. By the way, those of you who wanted the figure, the fashion figure template for this runway lineup, it has been posted to my Etsy shop. The link is in the description box. If you want a super detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on how to render a fashion illustration using watercolor or gouache, I do have that video. I'll link it in the description box below. This video is not going to be that. It's just going to be a lot of tips and tricks, especially on the process of doing an illustration with so many figures. You know, it's really going to focus on that more than individual rendering. And I have a lot of tutorials on you know, a lot of this stuff, like I have a pearls and beading rendering tutorial. I have a sequins rendering tutorial. I have two 
because uh, I have so many different methods with which you can render sequins and I have a skin tones rendering video where I go over how to mix even the very darkest skin tone colors. So go check out those videos if you want the individual uh, more step-by-step -step tutorials. Okay, a little bit about this process. If you're not aware, I have been working on this illustration for a while and I have been cataloging the whole thing. So, you know, there's a whole series. I'll drop the link in the description box. The first one shows me drawing the initial figure lineup. And then the second video goes over composition and value studies and how things you learn in color theory apply to planning out how the colors are going to sit, how the outfits are going to sit on a composition with this many figures. This is 11 figures. I had designed all these outfits off camera, like as I was, you know, traveling and sitting on airplanes for a long time. I designed those and then my third video goes over taking those quick sketches, editing them down to the ones I wanted to keep and why, putting them on figures. And then the fourth video goes over prepping an illustration for painting, um, all the little nitty gritty details that no one really thinks about, you know, because these illustrations take a lot longer than people think. And some of it is prep work. Some of it is really not just straight up painting. Off camera, there was even more prep work involved. And you know, the thing is, is like the more prep you do, the easier everything is going to be when you're actually getting to the painting. So before I got here, when we last left off on the last video, I had drawn out all the figures on my final sheet of paper. That was the end of it, right? So since then, I um, I had scanned in the previous rough draft of this sketch. And so I printed out some copies and I did some rough marker color layouts. Okay, I wasn't going to try to figure out the colors as I go along in this painting. No way. If you follow me on social media, then you know that I was torn between two different color stories and I had asked you guys to vote and I got an awesome response and uh, yeah, now you know which color story I went with. Uh, this was the clear winner. But I pulled markers that kind of were close matches and I did a rough color placement layout and I even did one with the other color story just in case I fell in love with it. Uh, spoiler alert, I did not. <laughs> so I did a color layout of this and you know it, it wasn't a one shot. I had to do it a few different times and you know there were certain sections I didn't like and so I recopied them and I re-sketched out the color placement and kind of patchworked it on there and one of the renditions had a lot more blue and green but it 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 kind of lost its cohesiveness and I still wanted it to look like it was all coming from one cohesive collection so things like that so I was like planning all that out skin tones hair colors things like that the other thing that I planned out in the marker rough was light source. Okay, I didn't shadow all the figures, but I did tinker around a little bit so that I could figure out what light source I wanted. And I decided that I was going to have the light source coming from the right hand side. Because if I had it coming from the left hand side, then it would have looked more like it was coming from the front. And then naturally that would have caused each figure to cast a shadow behind them and i felt that that would have started getting weird and shadow heavy and if there weren't cast shadows then it wouldn't have looked right i mean you know it's fashion illustration they don't have to be scientifically correct but there should be some you know it should live in the realm of possibility <laughs> 
you know how I'm always going on about gravity so that it looks realistic enough, you know? So I thought that, you know, not dealing with too much overlapping shadow would be the best option. And yeah, I turn my illustration upside down sometimes because I don't like painting, moving my arm in awkward positions. And you always have to be careful of what areas are still wet. That's a big thing when you're working on bigger multi-figure illustrations is watch out for areas that are wet. I typically paint left to right because I'm right-handed. But you know, you skip around and bounce around a few times. You know, I'm always bouncing around and you know, if I need a section to be dry before I go back to painting, you know, paint something else, come back and you know, bounce, bounce, bounce. So always be aware of what areas have wet paint. Even though I typically paint left to right, I started with the very last dress because I make a point to never start a painting by painting the most prominent or important section. Okay, whether it's a single figure or multiple figures, whatever is the most eye-catching part, I don't paint that first because I want to give myself a chance to warm up. So I start with something that's easy for me or easier Anyway, that's why I'm laying down all the flat color first and I'm going to go in there with the pearls and the fringe and whatnot later on. Um, normally, I would have started with one of the middle dresses because those are kind of the least eye-catching, I guess. But in this circumstance, I had the dresses all lined up lightest to darkest. And it's kind of hard to figure out exactly you know what the middle dress is going to be without any kind of reference point whereas doing the lightest and the darkest was going to be much easier so that's why I started with the darkest dress and I don't know if your computer or TV uh, is going to catch this but these two first figures, their skin color is actually different from one another. Like this first one is not black. There's quite a bit of uh, burnt umber in the skin tone. And then uh, there is a difference between the two. Like I know some computers or TVs aren't going to pick up on that. I recently learned that people are watching me on a TV screen. <laughs> and that's kind of weird to have my stuff blown up that big but um yeah uh, that's kind of awesome <laughs> so when you are painting anything darker especially skin tone you're gonna get a bit more opaque okay that's just the nature of painting with gouache and you know it's really hard to move opaque gouache around Okay, because it's thicker, doesn't flow. So what I actually prefer is painting in two layers. Okay, so it, the paint is still thicker than lighter colors. It's got a lot less water. Uh, but I will lay down a layer, and then I'll lay down another layer so that it's really opaque and you don't see much of the streaking. Okay, because that is super important. I want the skin to look and flat and smooth and perfect. And even with this darkest figure, this like Alec Weck, Grace Jones, so super dark skin tone, I still wouldn't shadow it with black because it looks super harsh. I literally only shadow black with black. Okay? I'm still going to have like the lightest touch of burnt umber in the shadow tones for that first figure. So this is about five hours of work, and that doesn't include the marker rough drafts that I did before. And it's been like reduced to 22 minutes. It's amazing. Uh, oh, I do have a love-hate relationship with time lapse. You know, it's awesome 
to show so much in a short period of time. But I mean, I think that people really don't understand how much work goes into things because they're so used to watching it done, get, you know, watching it be done so fast, so quickly. Uh, yeah. So this is five hours of work and obviously I'm nowhere near done. Uh, the next video, I'm hoping to get everything wrapped up in the next video. I don't want the painting itself to be a whole series, but yeah, I will be doing the pearls, the sequins, the fringe, uh, finishing shadowing sections. I haven't shadowed yet. Uh, the hair will be dead last. Okay, hair in fashion illustration, especially design communication, it has two functions. Either one, it's like the focal point, okay, or one of the focal points, or, and you know, you plan around the hair color, or the hair color is strictly to push and amplify everything else. And since the vast majority of the illustration I do is design communication, you know, I think about the hair color the last, okay? I plan out the color for everything else. And then, you know, obviously the clothes come first. And then, you know, what skin tone is going to look best on what outfit. And then I think about the hair the last because ultimately the hair doesn't matter, okay? It either helps the illustration look better or it doesn't. In terms of the styling, I had everyone have very similar hairstyles, much like it would be in an actual runway show, you know, taking into consideration people's hair lengths and textures, but really they're styled the same. I wanted something out of the way. Um, I haven't 100% decided on the hair color. I have an idea as to what I think would look cool, but you know, it's going to be the very last thing that I paint. One last note, uh, I'm my favorite light to paint by is daylight. Okay, I have big windows in my loft. I'm blessed. And I have my if you've watched any of my face cam videos, then you know that my work table is right by a giant bank of windows. And that is definitely a deliberate decision because I love the light, using the light. And I find that when color matching is super important, you know, it's really important that I use that daylight. There's a section in this video that where I painted under studio lights instead. and I can tell, and it's a little bit annoying, but you know, sometimes you gotta paint at night. But the thing is, when you are working on a, an important project where the color matching is pivotal, it's good to mix your colors at the very least and get them all matched up in proper light. Sometimes, you know, when it's at school and it's for a school project, I tell students like, you know, paint at school. If your teacher is going to grade you under a specific kind of light, then maybe you paint under that light so you don't get docked points for your colors not matching your project. Just saying. But for the most part, you know, if you can match your colors in the daylight, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You know, especially if you're going to be working under circumstances where you can't predict what light they're going to look at your project in. Like if you're sending something in to a freelance client or a competition where you send in the project. So lighting is important, y'all. Lighting is important. I do have a white LED lamp on the side that's not the other side of the window, but that's mainly because I need more light for the camera. I wouldn't need it if I were just painting on my own without filming. Ah, and a note on painting gouache opaquely, such as the darker skin tones or the darker dresses. I do, I always paint one section at a time, okay? And I try to leave like 
a tiny sliver of space between sections when I am working opaquely and covering a lot of the pencil. If you look at the first two figures, you'll see there's like a bit of a line under the, like, that shows the jaw as it separates from the neck. And then on the hand, you can see that I've kind of painted around the thumb and the fingers so that later on when I'm shadowing the hand and shadowing the face and things like that, I have guides for the shapes. Please do hit the thumbs up button if you found this video amusing or educational or helpful. And if you would like to see more narrated time-lapse illustration videos in the future, I will be finishing up this illustration as soon as possible. Yes, those socks are supposed to be sheer and that's why I have a bit of flesh tone in there. If you want to learn how to render shears, I have a video on that too. And uh, share, subscribe, and when you subscribe, hit that notification bell, uh, that little gray bell that shows up when you subscribe. Apparently, it's a two-step system now, and simply subscribing will not get you any notifications. Anyway, that's the YouTube system. Just passing that along. Not just my channel, but everyone else's, apparently. I'm kind of liking how this is turning out so far. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, don't forget, if you're interested, go pick up that fashion figures template of this runway lineup in my Etsy store. And I will see you in the next video.